Welcome to the Parsha Perspective. Each week, we will delve deep in a weekly Torah portion to find a practical and insightful way to enhance your daily life. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Shalom Yemini. Each week, we will look into the weekly Torah portion to find inspiration that will complement your daily life and intensify your connection to God. This week's Torah portion is Parshas Tetzave. Our Parsha continues to speak about the building and the service of the Mishkan. Hashem tells Moshe that only the purest of olive oils can be used for the daily kindling of the Menorah. Hashem then appoints Aaron and his sons to serve as priests as Kohanim in the Mishkan on behalf of the rest of the Jewish people. During their service, the Kohanim must wear four special priestly garments, the Mechnasayim, the underpants, Ketunis, a large robe, Avnit, a belt, and Metznefes, a hat. However, the Kohen Gadol, the high priest, would wear four extra special garments during his service, the Me'il, a blue sleeveless robe with the lower hem fringed with small golden bells and pomegranate-shaped tassels, the ephod, an embroidered vest with a gemstone on each shoulder which had the names of each tribe engraved on it. The choshen, a breastplate with twelve gemstones, on each gemstone had engraved the name of one tribe. The tzitz, a golden plate inscribed with the name of Hashem which was attached to his turban. However, a question comes to mind. When the Torah describes the daily karbanis, the daily offerings, it says, You shall offer the second lamb, the lamb in the afternoon, as the same meal offering as the morning sacrifice, making it a pleasant smell for God. A continuous offering throughout the generations shall be placed at the entrance of the oil maid, the tent of meeting. For it is there that I will meet with you and I will speak with you. However, the next Pesach reiterates this point again. And it is there that I will meet the Jewish people and I shall be sanctified by my presence. Why does the Torah, which is usually very concise with its wording, repeat the purpose of the Mishkan multiple times? The famous Maharal Prague, in his Sefer, the Gur Aryeh, which is a commentary on Rashi, explains that the reason why the Torah seemingly repeats itself is because the Pasuk is talking to two different people. He explains that since Maisha was on an extremely lofty level of holiness, he was able to speak directly with Hashem at all times. So the first Pasuk is speaking specifically to him. And this is why it says, Where I will meet with you and I will speak with you. However, the second Pasuk is referring to the rest of the Jewish people who needed to prepare before coming before God. And therefore, the Pasuk says, And it is there that I will meet with the Jewish people and that shall be sanctified by my presence. However, the Labavit Rebbe gives a deeper and more powerful explanation. He explains that the Pesukim are referring to two separate times. The first Pesuk is referring to an era when the Mishkan or Basin Middash was standing, a time when there was a continuous fire on the Mizbeach, signaling to the world that God's holiness was present. As the Pesuk says, a continuous offering throughout the generations shall be at the entrance of the tent of meeting. For it is there that I will meet with you and I will speak with you. The Lubavitch Rebbe continues that the second Pesach is referring to an era when the Jewish people are in exile, a time when there is no Mishkan or Beis Mikdash standing, a generation that cannot see the physical manifestation of God's presence in this world, a time like today. Hashem is telling the Jewish people that even in exile, when His divine presence is concealed, we can still experience His holiness in a physical manner if we create a dwelling place for Him. We can build a dedicated space for Hashem in our lives by learning Torah and following the mitzvahs, keeping the eternal flame alive. This crucial lesson is ever more prevalent during the holiday of Purim. The story of Purim took place after the destruction of the first Beis Hamikdash, when some Jewish people went to a feast thrown by King Ahasuerus. This immensely angered Hashem, who then allowed Haman Arasha to plot the demise of the Jewish nation. However, a leader of the Jewish people, Mordechai Hatzadik, did not only keep the flame alive for himself, 
but rather for the rest of the Jewish nation as well. He took the Jewish community in Shushan and 22,000 children to learn Torah openly in the streets and beg Hashem for mercy. His incredible belief and extraordinary actions changed the fate of the Jewish people from a dire outcome to the most joyous holiday. The lesson of Purim is that no matter the situation, we can always turn to our Father in Heaven and ask for salvation. And since we are His children, He will surely rescue us as He did by Purim with Mordechai and Esther and countless of other times. May we experience the same level of salvation as the Jewish people did in times of King Ahasuerus. As the Pesach says, La Yehudim the Simcha, the Sasan, the Ikor. And the Jewish people enjoyed elation, gladness, happiness, and honor. Have a meaningful Shabbos and a happy Shabbos.